to, to move forward and package up both our subsurface disposal questions as well as any agreement on the land transfer. Uh, what is the board's pleasure? I would think it might be valuable to look at the site and uh, also uh, would be my feeling that perhaps we should have a public hearing since there are a lot of people that abut you, particularly on Fowler Road, and uh, that might be nice to good a neighborly thing to do to at least apprise them of what's going on and let them make any comments. How does the rest of the board feel? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We have a tight walk at 9 o'clock for East Field Road on this coming Saturday. Would this coming Saturday be an appropriate time? Uh, if we said, I don't think it would take us very long, but maybe quarter of ten? Is that the R? And uh, we will, as soon as the rest of this information is completed, we will give you a date of receipt. And I would anticipate we might even be able to set the public hearing probably for the next time that you come in. At, at this point, at this point, unless you find the application to be complete, your the ordinance, right now, you, you uh, need to find the application complete first, and then you can set the public hearing. Right. So, so we'll need to do that. Are you saying that the absence of the sewage information and the absence of something stronger than the letter is enough to deem the application incomplete at this point? Yes. And you need that additional information prior to setting a public hearing? I believe so. I will double check while we... We are working with a new subdivision ordinance, so we are, even though we were instrumental in the rest of it... Okay, right. <laughs> I can't remember it. <laughs> yes. Our hope was to move to public hearing at our, our next time here to have an opportunity to, to gather the neighbor's input and understand that before we actually had the opportunity to On page go for six of the subdivision ordinance under the minor subdivision plans, it reads, the planning board at its discretion may hold a public hearing on a minor subdivision. If the board determines to hold a hearing, it shall hold the hearing within 30 days of the date that the application is determined to be complete and shall provide public notice in accordance with section 16.24 sub A sub 6 of this chapter. In essence, so that's right. Again, the, the minor subdivision is meant to streamline, but it also puts a, again, a slightly greater burden on the applicant right up front. And then we should be able to speed right along if there are no hangouts from there. Uh, any other questions? Excuse me, as I understand it, you're asking that next month we have a definitive agreement and a definitive um, um, and work out the uh, the technical aspects of the pump right. and then at next month you will uh, be able to set, set will a public be able hearing for the following month for, uh, the April meeting. All right, and you. we probably would be able to move quite swiftly from there on in unless there's something major that turns up all right. And if I may, just to point out in terms of time, timing is always very tight. Um, the submission requirement deadline for the next meeting is going to be, or well, is, February 26th, which is a, a week from this coming Friday. And what you need to do is you need to work out the sewage issue, which I think would be relatively minor. I think the, the, the agreement um, be relatively minor too, but also you need to get written approval, review and approval by both the town manager and the town attorney by that time. So in terms of getting that letter together and getting it out to both the town manager and town attorney, I suggest you, you, know, you do that sooner rather than later. And this is for both issues, right? Just for the For the e language. easements and transfer. <coughs> well, anything that's required needs to be submitted by February 26th. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. And we'll look forward to seeing you at the next meeting.
Our next item of business is Canterbury Hill, which is coming in for a adjustment um, to their plan. As I understand it, and I apologize for keeping you waiting so That's long. That's quite all right. Here we are. Um, you and Jerry Daigle have met, and I'm not sure how much needs to be explained now. I think if you would just tell us uh, what you have done on the plan, okay. so that we would know what the difference is between this There's and a colored plan that was submitted by the state of The history. We, um, John Cesarian, Crest Development. Um, we were in the midst of construction. It was the end of September. We had been marketing the project for a couple of months. We had four foundations, eight units, <coughs> left to do. Grondon was there, the site contractor. Main drilling and blasting was there. And um, we wanted to make a change from four B units to four C units. The B's and C units have approximately the same square footage on the first floor. The, the C units, the preferred unit, has one less room. Therefore, the rooms that it has are all larger. There seemed to be a market preference for that. Um, I called Jerry and spoke with him and Ernie McFain and said, these are, the, these are the changes we'd like to make. Is this a de minimis enough change so that we can go ahead and do it now rather than waiting six or eight weeks for the next planning board meeting because then we'd be into winter conditions and it would change those whole eight homes might be delayed into the next building season. We presented the plan to Jerry and uh, that was September 29th thereabouts. Now we have as-built drawings and these are done for the as-built. We're here to get the linen signed so that what we built and what you signed are in conformance. So there are no changes to any other structures no. like the tennis floor oh, no. or no addition of gazebos or no. anything? No. still had the garage out front to a C, which had the garages in between to promote the back to privacy. Um, the side benefit of this, this was the original plan. And to get into this B garage, one had to come down Canterbury Way, come up this small hill, and make more than a 93 U-turn in this garage. This was also coming up the hill 
and into this garage. With this plan, which has all C units, the driveways are much more straightforward and direct onto the way. And that's basically the entire explanation. Excuse me? And Jerry Daigle and, and Cody Horseman officer for all. Yes. No, I wouldn't have done this without somebody's permission. Yes. Oh, but it's all consistent. Right. Mm -hmm. And I know, I know some of you have been involved in giving invitations to each other of our open houses, and I know some of you have been out there. I don't know. We're having another one for the A model unit, which will be this 25. It will be completed and decorated in, in March. So uh, we'll be receiving invitations to that. We hope to see you all out there. We're real proud of uh, our project. Uh, which linen do we need to sign? Oh, do we have I have the linen here. Are there any questions? Or two, two, two things if I could. So two questions. One is I want to make sure there's we reaffirm for the record there's been no changes to the other part of the, no, no, the that's remaining why, part of the parcel. That's why reference was made right. to it. And, yeah. And, uh, well, this is the old reference was made to its title reference because we didn't make any changes. Yeah. Also, that's, I, mean, I think also, do you have a paper copy of other than this of the fourth? Okay, I guess, I guess for now, if we could do, if we could ask you to do two things. One, if we can make sure we got three copies of three paper copies of the newly signed letter for our records. Oh, after you sign it. After we sign it. And also, probably just to make sure the board should probably sign one paper copy now just to make sure that. You have 15 paper copies. Right. And you have a number that are called right. up as well. But I think we'll want three with the signatures on the. Okay. So if we could sign maybe this copy. I think they can use blue or red now. Really? Oh, that sounds colorful. You should be. I remember when you have to use black or use blue. Is that black? Always well. And this is two fifty eight. Well, that would would take black. Alice, I could ask now for the sign of paper copy. This is a revision. Well, it's now a fourth amendment. So the last one you signed was the third amendment. So the date is one third. No, I didn't know this wrong. Yeah, let's have a date. No, it's dated. Where is it? This time it's dated. I know last time we had a revision and, and it was undated and we dated it that time. Date, revision. No, but it's. Oh, it's renamed the fourth amendment. It's dated 113. In the date block. Yeah. This uh, is now the original. Why do we have a date block? Uh, 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 if, 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 for instance, we want to change the draft. Steve Moore just left. He didn't work on it. Dave Miller was in cloud of it. So that's each count of the people we write in on. You just have days. Oh, no
do this in five minutes, but you've been patient enough to, to wait through here. Uh, the next item of business is new business, Key Shop Spray, the zone change recommendation. And a uh, proposal for boat notes. Madam Chairperson and members of the board, I'm uh, Peter Murray and I'm here with Finn Sprague uh, standing in for my partner Peter Plum who has been handling this. Peter is at the moment uh, on vacation with his family and so he asked me to uh, convey to his, his apologies that he's not here tonight but I'll try to stand in in his place. Uh, I know it's very, very late. We really appreciate your willingness to hear us at least get this process started at this hour of the night. and. It does mean something, I think, to the many people who have come here to express their support of this particular change uh, as well. Uh, if I might just take a moment, because I know it's very late, to present to you what the change is, and then I understand from Mr. Butler that you will be noticing this for public hearing, and so that we can hold perhaps some of our presentation for the public hearing rather than taking a great deal of your time tonight. Uh, what we are proposing uh, is a, uh, and which is what the uh, city council has referred to you folks for your review and recommendation, is a very slight change in the text of the uh, agricultural residence zone RA uh, to permit on a very limited basis uh, a traditional Cape Elizabeth activity to be carried on in this zone, and that is on a very small scale uh, the repair or construction of boats in the farm premises on property that's actually used for farm use. So uh, it's very narrowly limited uh, to, first of all, permit what Mr. Sprague, uh, the extraordinary, the beautiful craft work that Mr. Sprague and his associates are carrying on, and secondly, to do so in a manner which would be generally applicable to the zones of the town in a way that would not make any change in the traditional activities of the town and in no way contravene uh, the general uh, zoning plan. Uh, what we have here is the proposed text change says that it is added to uh, section 19.22 F which uh, defines the permitted uses in the agricultural residence zone and says uh, in addition to it adds to the paragraph that refers to any agricultural use and on any lot used in part for agricultural purposes, so that means that only lots which are in fact used in part for agricultural purposes, and not, not on strictly residence lots, but only on farm, farm lots, a boathouse in which boats are built and or repaired. Note that that is a boathouse in which boats are actually built or repaired, not outside boat building activities, but a boathouse where the boat's being built inside as opposed to any kind of outside boat yard, outside storage, or anything like that. That's not permitted in this uh, thing. Provided that no more than six employees may be engaged on a continuous basis in such activity, that again is to restrict the employment to a craft type operation, which is what we're talking about. Mr. Sprague, as you'll see, probably in more detail at the public hearing, is carrying on an ancient tradition of beautiful craftsmanship, of restoring usually one at a time, beautiful wooden boats and he and a handful of dedicated associates work on these boats like, uh, well, we have an album of pictures here that we could spend the whole night looking at the kind of thing he does. Anyway, it's not more than six employees and furthermore, no such boathouse can be uh, maintained on a commercial basis on any lot smaller than 100,000 square feet. That is to harken back to the similar condition in the agricultural ordinance which says that no, uh, uh, no animal or fowl may be raised for commercial purposes on a lot less than 100,000 square feet so that it is to keep, uh, uh, keep any commercial boathouse to be built on a very small, uh, small lot. What we're prepared to show uh, you, you folks in making the recommendation and ultimately uh, the council is that on, the, on an overall situation as far as the policy and practices of the town, this kind of activity in this, the agricultural uh, zone is in fact a traditional, very appropriate activity from the standpoint of the town to encourage it to preserve, to preserve the flavor of the town, to preserve uh, ancient crafts and activities that are part of the heritage of Cape Elizabeth, 
are part of the heritage of the state of Maine and to give them the opportunity to continue on the very small and craft-oriented basis that they have in the past. We further propose to, to show you that in this particular case, that is a particular use that Mr. Sprague is doing under the conditions in which he is carrying it on, that if the zone were zone text language were amended to permit that, that indeed that his particular operation would be very much in accord with the zoning policy of the town, that it would be totally innocuous, and that there are many, many people here in this room and who would otherwise come who uh, vigorously support this, want it to continue in Cape Elizabeth, would wait, like it to continue in the way that Mr. Sprague and, uh, and his uh, few associates are carrying it on. Uh, now, we have provided for you already, and I guess, uh, Madam Chairperson, I'd be guided a little bit by your desire for detail, because we have a presentation here that could take uh, quite a bit of time, but I do know that you do intend to, 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 to submit this to a public hearing, and uh, so I would be guided, if, if, you, if you merely wish to set it for public hearing at this point, I could, I could uh, invite your questions and perhaps ask those who are here in support of this thing to merely indicate uh, their support in some, some general ma manner. Or if you prefer additional presentation, we can certainly uh, make it any degree of completeness. I, I do think in view of the hour, and I, I'm, I'm sorry that it has taken us so long to get to your uh, proposal, but uh, it might be better if, if perhaps you did your presentation uh, at, the, uh, at the full public hearing. We're, uh, we're would the rest of the board I be amenable to that? Yeah. We have the public hearing on and uh, yes, we do have to have a public hearing procedure. We would have a public hearing here. Uh, if we make a recommendation for to the town council, then they also have a public hearing. So you'll have a chance to put right. your uh, information sure. forward uh, okay. a number of times. Uh, well, we, 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 we're certainly willing to do that. Are there yeah. any questions? That the, uh, no, know? I just thought perhaps the site visit would we be would, a good thing we'd to be tickled to, to be on your list of site visits and to make uh, whenever you're able to do so i think that that would uh, not only be something which would give you a pretty good idea of exactly mm. what is envisaged by this amendment and what kind of activity that is carried on but also be fascinating to see this wooden boat building going on too uh do you want to make a morning of it on uh, saturday morning uh, <laughs> this coming or would you like to go on another day mm. Uh, I don't have a calendar, I'm sorry. Following Saturday would be 27? Yes, yeah. okay. Okay. Following Saturday would be March 5th? How about March, Saturday, March 5th? Is that yeah. a possibility? I would be able to. Yeah, you, I, would, you, I would not be able We would be happy to How make more Sunday, than one. Sunday afternoon? Sunday's all right. Oh, maybe your workers aren't there on Sunday. Sunday the well, I can say that the workers Sunday. aren't there at all now because as you may or may not have heard, and we're under some real time constraint here because the, the, this, this activity was carried on on the belief that this was a perfectly appropriate accessory use to the agricultural land, the Grand Island Farm, where it's carried on. Uh, the town code enforcement officer disagreed, and so that uh, as a result of his action, uh, the boat building has now been ceased, is under a cease and desist order. This is a tremendous economic hardship because there are these craftsmen who Mr. Sprague, as there are three of them, who Mr. Sprague has assembled and is keeping on the payroll in the hopes that he can get this thing straightened out so they can go back to work on this boat. You will be able to see out there this extraordinarily beautiful boat that they have rebuilt from the keel on up and, uh, and you'll be able to see the physical facilities and so forth, but there won't unfortunately be anybody working. Madam Chairman, if I may, I just have to, I can't pin it all on our code enforcement officer. This has been before the Zoning Board of Appeals as well, and they've also... No, I'm not, yeah, I didn't, I didn't we'll, mean we'll thereby. Spread, all we'll I said is that they, that the operation shut down. Uh, how soon do you feel that we could do a public hearing? Uh, I, don't, I don't know about the next month. The public hearing could be done at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the site walk, if you want to have a site walk beforehand, one option might be if the daylight days are starting to get longer, if people could break away well, from yeah, work somewhere early. Sure. Be a possibility. Mm -hmm. sure. uh, if we move towards uh, March, yeah. What is this? 
This is next week. Uh, oh. This is this week. How about uh, March 22nd or 23rd? Love you. Pardon? March 22nd, 23rd, or February? Oh, February, Excuse sorry. Excuse me, February. Is that a possibility? February 22nd. Would that be all right? Would that, be would be, that would be excellent. Agreeable? Yes, indeed. 23rd? 22nd? What? Actually, 23rd would be better for me, but I'm... Should we try for the okay. 23rd? 22nd. Sure. We're doing it a week. And that's a Tuesday? Yeah. yeah. That's fine with us. And that's all right with you? Absolutely. And shall we say... Uh, can we set it for uh, five o'clock? Do you think would be enough light? Sure. Yes, and the inside of the boat shop is uh, is lit, so that's okay. good. We get a, a notice indicating what entrance we're supposed to go in, and how we're supposed to get access. How would be the best way to then to to meet at the boat shop, or or to meet someplace? Whatever they prefer. Yeah. Easy to get there. Meet at the corner. Uh, right. Just before you get through the gate. This is Ferry Hall. Road, take Frank a left, meet right there at that corner. Okay. That's Ferry Hall. That That's would be fine. That's Ferry Hall. That's fine. Okay, okay. Fine. okay. Five, 5 o'clock on the 23rd at Ferry Hall at the gates of the farm there. That would be from there. That would be excellent. And yeah. we will set a public hearing for March. Uh, yes. Let's try this next month. Okay. okay. The and notice uh, will be sent out. And you will receive a notice of that as uh, well. Any about her, so everyone well, we to really appreciate the opportunity to appear to the, to the, to the board and handling this so expeditiously. Just to, 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 to give the board an indication that the support, would those people who came here and are still here in support of this uh, so indicate? Are there any? Right. <laughs> so I think that you can see. Uh, appreciate that your long standing. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Chairman, just if I may, and I've already reiterated it to Mr. Murray, if we could have plans of the site and the, the lot, it might help in terms of this you, particular application. You shall have them right now, huh. and I can pass them out at this time. Uh, we have assistance to there are uh, 15 copies there. There are 15. I can get more than that. Uh, we need a total of 15 if we can have that. Well, I can make another so This will get us started. <laughs> that you have is a plan of the actual immediate environs, uh, which is a, a lot of some 407 acres that is part of the Ram Island farm. And if you will, uh, I won't bother with the big one, but if you will, the location of the shop is right here, in this, uh, this little building right in the middle here. This is an old barn, and it is now a it has a boat in it, which the people are working on. You can see. Then the smaller plan is a blow up of the immediate environs of the uh, of the shop. Really blow up of that section of the larger plan. So that gives you an idea of the of the immediate environs of the other thing. Okay. We also have for you again we aren't quite of the same as you see, you're, you're the right place. Here is a, a an actual footprint of the buildings involved, so that you can know the sizes and the dimensions of the particular building. It's not quite like land use consultants, but at least to give you uh, an idea of what, uh, what we have. That's quite like land. Right. Uh, that's helpful. Okay. Uh, okay. Steve. Uh, did you want to make any I, I think that the part of our presentation is, uh, is uh, we can save the rest of it for the public hearing, but if there are any questions at this stage, we'd be happy to, to answer or entertain. Does anyone want to make any comments at this point or ask any questions? Well, I have a question, but I just don't. Well, I can save it for the next one. Go ahead. Thanks. No. Now, I just wondered why um, you were going... Uh, applying for the zone text change 
when you could apply for just a zoning change. And then you could have your office, you know, as I read, you know, um, the uh, packet. I'm so tired I can't speak. Um, you know, it indicated that uh, your office had to be moved from there, et cetera. If you went for just a zone change, you wouldn't have to deal with any of that. Well, we tried to figure out, and of course, whenever you have a, a, an area like this, it's kind of on the borderline. Uh -huh. It's hard to decide whether to try for a zone change or a zone check, check change. What we felt, though, was that the that this particular activity was so much a part of the tradition of the farm activity in Cape Elizabeth, the so-called saltwater farm, yeah. that it would make that, that rather than car, carve out a business zone right, right there, it would be better to include this in the way it's carried on as a as a very limited uh, text change in the agricultural zone. I so think what the board is going to be interested in is the large question of whether commercial venture should be allowed in an RA zone, and that's what we would probably be feed yeah. into when we consider yeah. So I think that's what we need to address. Right. I, 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 and I, I, we're certainly prepared to address that because it seems curious to us that, 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 that there's some distinction. A farm, of course, is a commercial venture. A farm yeah. is a commercial venture where crops are raised for, for sale. And often there's, in fact, one of the ironies is, is the level of commercial activity on this site when it's used as a boat shop is much lower than it was when it was used as Mr. Wainwright's potato farm, when he had all kinds of trucks and harvesters and this and that going on around there, and much bigger cash volume of business and so forth. So that we are trying, in other words, to be sure it's commercial just like farming is commercial, in the sense that somebody's making some money from it. Uh, but whether it's the, but it, but it's a kind of commerce that's associated with a land-based farm activity, as opposed to the kind of commerce that people have carried on in business type of areas. Uh, uh, we certainly, however, as I explained to Steve, ultimately we don't have any pride of language as far as what this, how this should be defined. We think that this is a wonderful craft that should somehow be permitted to continue, whether it's called craft or commercial or, or, or whatever, so that a person who does have the talent and the skill to do this work on boats on his, on his own farm type property in an innocuous manner should be permitted to continue the tradition. So if, if, the, if Steve came up with some other language that would be more comfortable with the town's particular orientation on this issue, uh, then we would certainly uh, accept it, it that. It may be that we would want to make some suggestions. And we would be most receptive and cooperative. Size, buffers, criteria. That, that kind of material. I'm sure you'll see that this particular site, anyway, will satisfy almost any kind of buffer size criteria. <laughs> Mr. Butler. Uh, Chairman, two quick points <laughs> yeah. just for the applicant's benefit. Um, the board's going to have to make a recommendation to the town council based on consistency with the conference plan and consistency with the zoning ordinance. So anything, I know a lot of information has been submitted to the Board of Zoning Appeals. Anything that you might want to submit to the planning board that might highlight the consistency with those two ordinances or, or plans um, well, well, might be pretty good. What we have, and we have, I was going to submit it to the hearing, but I'm happy to give it to you now. We have, of course, some correspondence from people on this issue of the tradition of the saltwater farm, which might be of some interest to the planning board, indicating that the that boat building and repairing activities on a so-called commercial basis are actively part of the history of saltwater farms, and they were, have been carried on actually right here in Cape Elizabeth uh, ever since the first boat that was ever built in Maine was built on Richmond Island. Uh, but uh, the uh, and we'd be happy to sub submit this now if that would be of assistance to you or like, do it later the public hearing. As long as you submit it to perhaps it'd be best if you submit it to uh, the code enforcement office. As long as you do it before a week from this coming Friday. Okay, we'll put our little uh, pile together and then submit it. Fifteen copies of everything is that the? Okay, fine. Good. Well, thank, thank you very much. We will uh, see you at the public hearing and we'll see you at the site walk uh, on Tuesday the 23rd. Very uh, good. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Um, I'm sorry, are there still representatives here for Tonko uh, Shopping Center and we want to see Murray? Yeah. Um, you're from where? Leland Murray.
I am sorry. Uh, I hope you were here to hear us say that we ordinarily would close shop by 12 o'clock, and we're, our brains are getting a little numb, and I'll give you a pardon us. We don't want to. Bye-bye. Good seeing you. I'm sorry I left all of my stuff. Oh. Oh, I'm afraid we've got to set a uh, workshop put you on. for uh, consideration of resource and agricultural. Oh, what happened to the last workshop that I couldn't come to? Oh, I see. Um, would you like to think about it? I, I didn't want to say anything. I can't be there on Saturday. I didn't want to announce it to the whole television audience. <laughs> You just did. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay. Don't I don't have a plan in my mind. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.